trunks and weighed in at eight stone five and three quarter pounds bringing a 12 fight record 11 wins four inside the scheduled distance one defeat coming to the ring for his first defense of the british and commonwealth phantom weight championship is the champion from belfast please welcome tommy Wade. so sports fans and sky fans here we go let's get the action underway then for the british and commonwealth Championship. Tommy. Paul Thomas is the referee from Derby. Okay, spoke to you both in the dressing room. You know what I expect of you. Just remember during this contest, unless you hear me shout, stop boxing, you must defend yourself at all times. Judge Gloves, best of luck to both of you. Well done. And as Paul Dempsey was explaining earlier, Nicky Booth looking to join his brother Jason as a reigning British title holder, the first time that will have been done since George and John Feeney held the lightweight and bantamweight crowns 15 years ago. The silver trunks then of the challenger, Nicky Booth, the purple of Belfast's Tommy Waite, who's the first Irish holder of this Commonwealth title since Johnny Coldwell in 1964-65. Good jab straight away from Booth. Booth has been on the floor five times in his career already, but he does tend to get up. Well, Booth needs a, a good start here. If he gets a, a good start, you know, he can, he'll grow in confidence, and I, you know, I think he'll have a good performance, but he needs that good start. Booth usually has an attacking style. He doesn't have the power to go with it. That's a bit of a problem for him. Usually neat and nimble, Tommy Waite. But the first half minute, definitely going to the challenger. He started very positively, and that's a good left hand from him. Well, he's finding we're pretty easy to hit in these opening moments. And really, Wade needs to start moving his head and just get out of the way of some of these shots. Showing some classy combinations early on here, Nicky Booth. And driving a right hand through as well. His hand speed's good. His brother's got a lot of skill as well. Those two, of course, work quite a bit together, the Booth brothers. And uh, Jason, due to fight Ian Napper quite soon, we're told. That'll be an interesting fight due in November. Well, again, Booth getting off good right and left and finding Wade very easy to hit, isn't he? It's a great start here for the Nottingham boy. It's looking very, very sharp. Managed by Mike Shinfield and doing most of his training in Shinfield's back garden gym. Weight looking sluggish early on here. I don't know whether there's been a bit of a motivational problem for him. He was due to meet a South African tonight, just defending the Commonwealth title, but now he finds his British crown on the line as well against an eager young fellow who's come in late and senses that this could be his night. Well, Weir needs to certainly start getting busy in there, start using his jab and letting his shots go. Booth is all overweight so far. Well, he's given Booth the perfect start and all the confidence he needs. He can't miss in this opening round, a big round for Nicky Booth. It's a bit of a fairy tale, isn't it, this? For Nicky Booth at 20 years of age. I mean, last Thursday, there was nothing much going on. Well, he must be feeling it's a bit of a fairy tale. It certainly wasn't that opening round. It was, it was so easy to hit Tommy Weir. Just couldn't missing with shots and getting off with classy punches like that will have given young Nicky Booth an awful lot of confidence. He's apparently a very extrovert, outgoing type, Nicky Booth. Certainly the more extrovert of the two brothers. So there'll be no shortage of confidence. Wait, should be said, has been a slow starter before in his career. Hasn't got his boxing going at all so far. I wonder if he's just underestimated Nicky Booth a little. 
Well, I think you touched on the end with motivation. It must be difficult, you know, fights changing, you know, close to a, a title fight. And then finding, you know, your British titles up at stake as well. It, it makes it all difficult to get your, your mind on the job. Well, he's only been the champion for 30 days. It could be one of the shortest reigns in history if it slips away from him here. Purple trunks, remember the champion, Tommy Waite. Mixing it up to head and body, and so far, giving a punch-perfect display, Nicky Booth. There are one or two people around Nottingham who think he might be even better than Jason eventually. Well, he's quite long-limbed and loose, and he's picking these punches from all sorts of angles. Very busy too, Booth. Wait looking early on as if he's in a kind of trance, mesmerized by the challenger's work. He yes. can't get going. Well, it really needs to loosen up and start getting some aggression and throwing his punches. He's got to try and take this fight away from Booth. Still a long way to go though. This is still very, very early things can change but he needs to up the tempo with because Booth just boxing at the pace that he wants <laughs> problems here for Tommy Waite needs to do something just to shake the confidence of Booth. And Booth looking like he's got a very long reach. And Wade finding it difficult to get past that, that reach. Just getting out, boxed thoroughly early on, Wade. And usually that's his forte, his boxing skills. Well, it's going very well for the 20-year-old on the right there. Nicky Booth. He's landed 100 punches so far, and according to the computer, Tommy Waite has landed just 16. There's a spectacular difference. Well, I don't think the computer's that far wrong. Waite just can't get close enough and, you know, just isn't getting his punches off. 49% landed for Booth. That is a huge success rate, really. I'm sure Waite's corner will have told him to get to work. Jerry Story in there, and his son. Very experienced team. They won't be panicking yet. Booth has never gone further than eight rounds before. I suppose there has to be the question of how well he'll be equipped to go the full 12 coming in this late. But youth is on his side, and he's coming inside the limit with no problem, so my guess is it shouldn't be a problem nice sharp left hand from him there well i think what i like about him is he's so loose in there you know he's got a big opportunity but he hasn't tightened up he's very very loose and just picking his shots well high level of ability by the look of it must be coming as a bit of a nasty shot this to tommy Waite. he's just being made to look a bit leaden and plodding by comparison that's good though, that's a good shot from Wade. Best so far, left hook, then a little right hand as well. Needs more of it. Well, that's what Wade has to do. He has to fight at a, at a pace that Booth's not used to, and then Booth will feel it as the rounds go on. Waits doing better in this round. He's throwing more shots. Getting through with a few body punches. Looking a bit puffy around the face as well. Wait. But he's starting to have more success. Just starting to get a bit closer and be busier. 
this is the most even round so far starting to block a few more too from Booth he may have needed those first two rounds just to have a look at him he may not have known that much about him there wouldn't have been a lot of videos around of him either would there no there wouldn't be much of him so you know he's had to find out in there but now he's starting to dig the shots in a couple of good body punches in there from weight subtle shift in the plot round three good right uppercut booth class shot He looks up to speed now, Tommy Waite. He was like a tortoise out of the blocks. Well, let's have a little flick through the history books here. Some good names as we look at uh, boxing brothers. George and John Feeney, champions at the same time. And then there were a whole bunch of them who did hold the British titles, both of them, but not at the same time. Dick and Randolph Turpin. Chris and Kevin Finnegan, Duke and Clint McKenzie. I thought they did, but um, apparently not. We had a look through. Cliff and Brian Curvis going further back and even further back. Dick and Harry Corbett. No, not that Harry Corbett. And also from Nottingham, Kirkland and Tony Lang. Kirkland Lang. You remember him, the welterweight? The I gifted one. <laughs> very, very gifted. He was gifted. He beat Roberto Duran. He was excellent. Apart from the guy called Colin Jones. He found the punch, didn't he? Yep. Twice. Twice. Ninth round, Same round. carbon copy fights. Yeah, Kirkland was good. When the mood took him, which wasn't as often as it should be. Same city, Nottingham, Nicky Boo. Silver trunks of the challenger. Purple of defending British and Commonwealth champion Tommy Waite. Weight's eyes puffing up, bit of damage above the, the right eye, I think. Weight who broke his right ankle on a training run a while back. Ten screws, two pins and one plate still in that ankle. But obviously not affecting his mobility. We could nickname him the Metal Man, didn't we? We certainly could. That's... Um, it's a pretty bad run, isn't it? <laughs> Booth not so dominant now. Wait, starting to just ask a question or two. Good classy right hand. Yes, Booth can still catch him with uh, the long punches, and that's all he's got to concentrate on. He can't allow Wait to get too close where Wait can start working with his his little fast combinations that's a lovely right hand thrown through the middle it all seems to come so naturally to Nicky Booth just seems to find the right angle for the shots wait looking for the body punches I think to just slow Booth down a little I think one thing that Waite does in, have in his favour here, though, Dennis, is that man strength. He's still just a boy becoming a man, isn't he, Nicky Booth? That's right. I mean, that might be the difference if Waite can get in close and start working him to the body like he is. He's just trying to erode away this challenge, Waite. There's a cut on the right eye of Waite, just a bit of blood coming down now. Trying to get a closer look at that. Not surprised, really, because he's been peppered with quite a few shots early on, particularly in the first two rounds. Matching each other almost punch for punch. The cut is by the side of the eye. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. The blood won't run into the eye and obscure the vision. Unless it gets worse, of course. That's been known to happen. That's really good... Accuracy from Booth. There's been some good body punches in this round from Weight. That's a good round of action, really was. Hard to separate them. 
And in fact, I can't. I've scored that level. Some quite classy combinations from Booth and those body shots of Tommy Waite. Yep, I edged it for weight. But I think we'll see where the, the, he the heads clash. There they go. Certainly was a head clash there. And I think that's where the, the cut occurred. Yep. I think it well could have been the blood. You could see the blood there when they did. But there was some good work from both fighters in that round. Some nice long work from Booth. But I thought Wade was a bit busier. More punches and you know, a bit more successful to the body. Mike Shinfield and son uh, Jason Shinfield, the trainer, working the corner for Nicky Booth. It's a big ask for him, this, as the Aussies might say, to come in at uh, three days' notice and go away with the titles. But things like that do happen in boxing. Remember Steve Robinson coming in at 48 hours' notice and becoming WBO featherweight champion against John Davison up in the northeast. You have to take your chances when they come along sometimes. You certainly do. That's the name of the game in boxing. You've got to be ready all the time you know if you're a young fighter coming up you should always be in shape always ready to answer the call and i think the booth camp just had a hunch that something like that might happen with weight's original opponent and the hunch paid off wait with that cut by the right eye still making the body his prime target Some nice short of a cuts going in from Booth. He needs to be prepared to start gritting his teeth and you know, trying to up his own work rate. Because this has the signs of developing into a long, hard and pretty grueling battle here. And Waite is now showing that he's prepared to go very deep indeed to hold on to his crowns. He may have got them in fortuitous fashion, but having put them away in the locker he wants to keep them there sometimes it can change a fighter too becoming a champion like that can bring out extra qualities yes it certainly gives you more confidence when you you win a, a major title this could well come down to work rate and willpower now booth is going to have to need a little more than just his admirable skills. Nice combination from Weird there, double jab, left hook to the body. He's just starting to outwork him a little here now, Tommy Wake. Not by much. Well, he certainly warmed up an awful lot from the, the first round, Tommy Wake, where he, you know, he was really completely outboxed. Oh, great right uppercut that from Nicky Cook. That sent the sweat spraying from the head of Waite as it landed. Last 20 seconds of round five. Well, he's landed with a few nice shots, Booth, but I think Waite is just outworking him a bit now. Not by much, though, is it? Very, very close round. Let's have a look at uh, the body shots in that last round. Look at that. Tommy Waite. That's revealing, isn't it? 21 body shots landed. Booth, only three. Yes, it tells a lot. He's working very hard to the body. Weird. I think he feels that long, live, young body. You know, if he keeps getting them shots in, that's going to take an awful lot out of Booth down the stretch. But there wasn't much in the round. Booth landed plenty to the head. That's probably a different stat. Here's the sixth round. I just gave weight that last round, just. Purple Trunks, the defending champion from the Shank Hill Road in Belfast. Nottingham's Nicky Booth looking to join his brother as a British champion. And he's at ringside tonight. every time he tries to throw a shot. Oh, 
that's where really Booth can control this fight. A long range where he just puts that jab out. You know, he finds weight easy to hit. He doesn't need to get in close like that. Just pepper him and give him the angles. That's where he needs to keep it, isn't it? That'll stop weight from getting in close and throwing the body shots. It's good from Cook that. Whole range of uh, punches from Booth, rather. Looks composed and looks good, Booth, when he throws out that long jab. Just peppers him and then changes the angle. That's the sort of work he needs. Just working nicely on the outside. Another little change here in the sixth round. Weight looking a little more tired. He's had to eat a lot of head punches. Yeah, it's become hard for Wade in this round. Booth just changed his style, got a little more on the outside, used these long punches well, and um, Wade's had to take a few. Booth working almost exclusively to the head. Haven't seen much body attack from him. Completely different strategies at play here. Fascinating little battle, this, tactically. Well, there's been a good round for Booth, dominating at long range behind that jab. And I'd have to say whoever wins this, A.D. Lewis deserves the chance to win back his titles, having lost it cruelly on a cut last time. So I hope some justice prevails there. That's Booth's round. And uh, Nicky's brother, Jason, is talking with Ed Robinson. Well, Jason, he started smoothly enough, but he seems to have been drawn into a bit of a fight, your brother. Yeah, I think my brother will manage with a fight if he wants to fight him, but he's winning the fight easily at long range. So if he keeps going long range and keeps at his own pace, and if he wants to step it up, move out the road, I reckon he can run away with this title easier. It's just these, these are the crucial moments in the fight, so we'll see what happens, but he's definitely winning it. And he did take the fight at short notice, so... Yep, very short notice. If he had a bit of time, I don't think Tommy Waite will still be there. Thank you very much. Well, that's the uh, family viewpoint. Uh, I have got Booth ahead, but not by as much as Jason seems to have. No, I've got this fight level, I think. It's still, it's still poised. But that was certainly a better round for Booth at long range, just peppering him. And really, that, you know, that's the secret of the fight for Nicky Booth. I've got it three rounds to two with one even, going into the seventh here. Purple trunks, remember, of Tommy Wade of Belfast. There's Glenn's card. You've just confirming what he's told you. Level at 57 each, he says. Paul Thomas, the referee, the sole scorer here. Wade has to slip some of these long-range punches and roll and get inside where he can land those body shots again that were working for him. It's a really good effort, this, isn't it, from it Nicky Booth to come in like this, this late, and he looks the part. Doesn't look out of place, does he, in a fight for these titles? He doesn't. He's very relaxed, very confident, picking his shots you know, with a lot more maturity than he's got. A lot of latent ability there. I said before, it all just seems to come instinctively to him. I'll tell you what, if this young fellow had a bit of a punch as well, he'd be something, wouldn't he? He really would. He really would. But he, you know, he's got the measure of weight. If he keeps it at long range, good left hook there. Seemed to trouble weight that, and the right uppercut too. Waiting a spot of bother here. Needing to clear his head. Cut by the eyes as well. And these punches, even if he is a comparatively light hitter, Booth, must be beginning to take their toll. Tommy Waite is really going to have to dig very deep 
and produce something special if he wants to hang on to the crowns. Unless Booth fades in the second half of the contest. Sickening jabs, aren't they, now yeah, from Booth? He's using that jab so well. We're just not moving his head, just not getting out of the way of shots. It's like a spear over and over again. And then mixing in the left hook as well for the second time. Booth, you can see his confidence visibly growing. Another good left hook from Booth oh. on the right hand. Left himself open for that. Booth, the boss at the moment. This has been a good round for Booth, really has done well. For the second round in a row, Glenn. That's right. Well, he's on top at the moment, the 20-year-old. And there we are on the jabs land. Oh, dear, oh, dear, look at that. 19 to 129 so far. Well, Weir just hasn't been able to get in range. He hasn't been able to avoid the jab to land many of his own. It really has. He's thrown a jab, you know, like a very experienced professional. He hasn't snatched his jab. He's just placed it out with nice rhythm, nice authority, and, you know, that's how to throw a jab. Well, you hear people moaning in the business about the lack of young talent coming through, but in the last few days, we've seen a bit, haven't we? We certainly have, but, I mean, look at the way he's putting his punches together. You know, really with a lot of confidence, you know, mixing them up so well. Look at that. You know, that belies his lack of experience. There's a right hand as well. Wait, just looking a bit the worse for wear, and we'll need to be doing something different. Eighth round. What a story this could be for Nicky Booth, who has to make up his money laying concrete when he's not boxing. Well, he could be laying himself a path of gold if he wins this. Still work to do, though. The weight's shown before in the contest. He can come back. But he just walked on the punches that time as he tried to get in range. They're producing a very good battle, these two, for the famous old titles. Well, we need to try and show some championship quality now. You know, he's been hit far too much for, you know, somebody in his position. Looking puffy around the face as well. Booth relatively unmarked. He's obviously got good advice from the corner a couple of rounds ago to just keep things at range. The stop weight getting close enough to land the body shots. And there was four unanswered punches from Booth, just finding where it's so easy to hit. And there was one after the referee had said break. Wait proves to make nothing of it. Jason Booth sitting alongside us, living every moment for his brother. And having more to say than the corner even, I suspect, he's that involved. Well, that was a classy combination there from Booth, rocking the head back time and time again. How many more of these can Wait take as a left uppercut? He's turning on the style now. Good repertoire. This is not bad on three days' notice, is it? Oh. And that cut looks worse now, that right eye of Tommy Waite looks worse. There's blood from the mouth as well. 
and he's getting really peppered with these shots fast hands good repertoire from Nicky Booth who's a revelation here well if he keeps putting in combinations like this he could force the stoppage he's looking impressive he really is he's pulling away now and these are big problems for Tommy Waite who has had to take a great deal of punishment I hope Jason's going to be all right there. He looks like he's about to have a heart attack to me. He's getting so involved. <laughs> he's shown three runs. He's obviously getting carried away because there's four left to go. There's some good combination going in. Really, really good. You know, putting together four punches. They're all landing. Well, this Nicky Booth boxed only two weeks ago in Shaw near Manchester. Here he is again tonight. And there's his brother. Jason Booth enjoying it. <laughs> He's looking, he looks relaxed at the moment. Wait till the round starts. He, go, he goes potty then. <laughs> but he's enjoying it. As I think uh, all of us neutrals are enjoying Nicky Booth's performance here. Tommy Waits having to show a good deal of grit. Usually boxing skills his forte, but it must be said he has been outboxed by the 20-year-old. to use the ring I don't think you know his, his chance he th I think he thought was to get inside but you know he's given up on that and now starting to move around I'm not sure that's going to make it any easier for him this is the longest fight of Nicky Booth's career now previously the furthest he'd gone was eight against Russell Lang win over Nicky Booth is beginning to look better by the second and he of course is uh, lined up to fight brother Jason but I think you've got to look at the potential of Nicky Booth you know just 20 years of age very inexperienced you know with more good fights and good guidance you know, he looks a fighter that can certainly move on from here might have run out of ideas at the moment <laughs> feel a bit sorry I must say for Tommy Wade he's only been champion for a month he planned to fight a different opponent than this with three days to go he suddenly gets this young man who's got bags of talent and it's not easy that is it no it's not I think it's, it has been hard preparations for Tommy Wade but then you know, Nicky Booth just come in, not, not expecting any of this either on three days' notice, so you know, his preparations haven't been ideal, to say the least. Yeah, it's just a, it's a problem for, for both of them, but if you're a champion, it's something you have to cope with. The way things are in boxing, there's always likely to be late switches. Too many of them, if you ask me, but that's another story. Well, he's doing so well, Nicky Booth. I've got him four points ahead on all scorecards. He must be leading this. Paul Thomas, the referee, the only one that counts. Now, there's his brother, the British and Commonwealth flyweight champion, Jason. Look at him. They also serve who only sit and watch. I bet he wishes he could get in there with him. I think he's probably happy just letting his brother do this one. <laughs> Tenth round here. 
Yes, yeah, only Nicky's getting paid. <laughs> yeah, let them do the wrong thing. But he could be just nine minutes away from having the handsome Lonsdale belt put round his waist. Nicky Booth. Good right hand from Wait. Sharp reminder. Could there be late drama here? Or will Nicky Booth close the show, as they say? Well, Weird needs to really push forward because it's, it's all going away from him now. I've got Booth three points ahead, 87, 84, so he's got an awful lot to do, Tommy Weird. Tried to go south for a moment there. Wait. I think he realizes he's got to do something different. Those eyes are getting very, very puffy, too, of Tommy Waite. Nice short left hook from Booth again, making Waite give ground. No sign at all of Nicky Booth's stamina giving out either, which is something we had to take on trust going in. Well, I think the good thing from Booth's point of view is he's boxed this, this contest at his own pace. You know, he's controlled it and done what he has to do. So he shouldn't really see him, you know, running out of gas. Apparently the two brothers, Nicky and Jason, used to have one pair of boxing gloves between them when they mucked about as kids. One wore one glove and one wore the other one. Who'd have thought they'd both end up as simultaneous British champions. It's looking as if that's not going to be the way of it. Barring weight coming up with something spectacular late on here. Not quite so sharp in this round, Nicky Boo. No, but the problem weird hasn't made him peer for it. Wait, must be pretty tired from all those punches. He's trying to just switch hit a little here and there. Pretty sickened as well, I would think, by that long jab catching time and time again. Well, a couple of rounds to go. And still to come, one of Britain's leading lightweights, Bobby Vanzi, defending his Commonwealth crown against a 20-year-old Ghanaian who the camp say is extremely good. So could there be a shock in store for Bobby Vanzi, Latakwai Hammond, who calls himself the shocker? Sparred with Azuma Nelson when he was 16. Vanzi looking to get in with the likes of Billy Schwer and Colin Dunn and Michael Ayres as well. So that could be tasty too. Look at this. There's the computer showing that uh, Nicky Booth has thrown 902 so far and he's landed a lot more than weight with a much, much better success rate. It does tell the story, that, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And just looking at him there, two rounds to go. He still looks comfortable. I still have Nicky Booth in a four-point lead. What about you, Glenn? I've got him in a, a three-point lead. I didn't think neither one did a lot in the last round, and for me, a, a level round. Yeah, I had it level two, but I had it four points before that. Well, he's doing the right thing. He's got center ring, controlling from there, catching weird, a long range, all close in. You do have to feel a bit sorry for Tommy Weir. It really has been a, a tough night for him. He just hasn't getting in this fight. Well, I'm sure there'll be other nights for Tommy Waite. But he's going to have to go right the way back and rebuild if he loses his titles here. Good right uppercut from Waite. Needs to get back to what he was doing around the 
third and fourth and fifth rounds getting with those body punches it was looking an evenish sort of fight then hard to call which way it might go but since then Booth has really taken control of it well and that jab has been such a good punch for Booth really has used that punch well possibly just beginning to coast a little Nicky Booth the last couple of rounds well, and just tiring just slowing down allowing Tom Wade to catch him with a few shots does need to just pick it up again but this is where your lack of confidence you know, you, you've never done this distance before it's getting hard you wonder what your body's gonna feel like and you're, you're trying to save a little bit in reserve just got to be careful that he doesn't allow wait to close it up and make it an argument on the scorecards in the last couple of rounds i don't think it should be but you never can tell we do not know what the scorecard of referee paul thomas is saying we're trying to get in double up and treble up that jab it's trying to be a bit busier in this round That's good from Waite. His confidence just starting to rise a little. Maybe he senses that Booth is slowing. He needed something to happen. Well, this is better for Waite now, trying to mix it up head and body. It's his best round in a long time. I think Waite wins that one. But it may be too late for Waite. Punch has landed so far. This is according to the computer. 226 weight, 381 Booth. I make it that Booth going into the final round is three points ahead. Well, I've got Booth two points ahead going into the final round. So yeah, he needs to pick it up. He needs a big round. 106, 104. Which is close enough to make an argument if Paul yep. Thomas has seen a couple of things differently. That's right. That's right, and you, we can never second guess referees or judges. How tired is he? They're trying to just G him up for the last three minutes. He looks quite drained to me now, Nicky Booth. It's easily the longest fight of his career. Look at the face of Tommy Waite. There's Jason, just a little pensive now. Last three minutes. And I would suggest that Tommy Waite must win this last round to even have a glimmer of a chance yes he's clawed back in a, in a few rounds tommy weird but booth overall has looked at the boss throughout and looked in control of this fight hasn't he the right hand from white Had it easy himself, Tommy Waite. Had a long road from that fruit and veg stall on the Shankill Road. And a terrible injury with the broken ankle. A lucky break in winning the title. And now this very, very tough defence indeed against a talented young opponent. Maybe the well is just starting to run dry though for Nicky Booth. It doesn't look as if there's a great deal left in the tank of weight either. He's struggling this round to pick himself up. You know, this is where, if he thinks it's falling away from this way, he need a really big round and throw lots of punches. And he's not boxing like that. No, he isn't, is he? He's not really chasing it. It's a bit of a standoff at the moment, in fact. I think Boo thinks he's done enough, and he may well have done. History could be beckoning for the youngster from Nottingham. Quietish last round, surprisingly so, really. Yes, it is when there's so much up for grabs. You'd expect it to be a frantic last round, but not that way. I think you hit the nail on the head, though. I don't think either of them have got very much left. No, I think you're right. Wade's took an awful lot of punches, and your boo's bound to be tired just because he's inexperienced. 
45 seconds to go for the British and Commonwealth Bantamweight Championships. Tommy Waite looking in severe danger of losing those crowns after just a month as the holder of the titles. Nice long shots from Boo there. Just showing that, you know, what's worked so good for him, his reflexes, his looseness, and his confidence. Doubling up on the jab from Waite, but he needs more than that, I suspect. We'll have our answer in 10 seconds' time. Just seems to slip Waite. Bell coming up any second now. And we'll get Paul Thomas's verdict. And it goes to Nicky Booth, is the new British and Commonwealth bantamweight champion. Look at his brother Jason. They're champions together. The first time that's happened since George and John Feeney 15 years ago. And what a story. What a story for Nicky Booth, who took the fight only last Friday and comes in and wins it. And he deserved to do it too. What about that? <laughs> Unbelievable. And we just talked about a fairy tale at the beginning of this fight. It really has proved to be a fairy tale for Booth. Just coming in three days' notice, taking away the title, but doing it with so much confidence, so much maturity. You know, he really looked as if he belonged there, and he belonged as champion. And it was tremendously well done for him. A little hard lines, but we just couldn't get in the fight, never looked settled. And well done too to the Shinfield camp, Mike and Jason, who have a champion. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, referee Paul Thomas has scored the contest for weight 114 points, for Booth 117 points. Your winner and the new British and Commonwealth Phantom Weight Champion from Nottingham, one smooth. We call upon the Commonwealth Supervisor, President of the Commonwealth Council, Nesquay Mensa, and the coveted Lonsdale Belt, our Supervisor, Mr. Dennis Lockton. They'll need a bigger sideboard at home for all these title belts, won't they? He's only 20. He's one of the youngest ever British champions, Jim. Is this a big talent? Yeah, well, that was a tremendous achievement, that, that's for sure. We've been saying recently that the bantamweight division is a fairly poor division. We've been looking for someone to come along and brighten it up. This little fella might be the very man. In fact, that kind of performance after three days' notice, when we saw skill, didn't see a lot of punching power, but he gets by on, but without that. And his natural fitness that he obviously has has gotten through 12 rounds. And I think it was a tremendous performance. Wonderful. Back to Ian with a whole host of champions at ringside. Yes, they've got uh, a couple of bouts here now. Well, you were a revelation there, Nicky. Just tell us the story of how you heard about the way you were going to get this fight. It was last Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, Friday morning, I come back from training, just thought I'd do a bit. And then, you know, tell brother fight Napa in um, Wednesday. November the 3rd. Yeah. Done a bit of training, come back. My, um, Jay phoned me up, says, um, got good news for you. He says, um, what kind of news? Eliminator, because that's what I was geeing up for anyway. But I didn't really kick off. Uh, and then he says, um, it's a bit high, then that goes, what, Tommy Waite? I went, yeah, down the phone, but I broke it. <laughs> so you're the British and Commonwealth champion. I bet you can't believe it, can you? Three days' notice. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. I'm not 100% fit, so you wait till I am 100% fit. You should have seen your brother while the fight was going on. He was living every second. You're proud of him, aren't you, Jason? Very proud of him. I thought he was brilliant. First, <laughs> first, first half of the fight, I was just taking him apart. Like I said, if he was 100%, he could have kept that in mid long range. I bet there's going to be a right old shindig in Nottingham tonight, isn't there? Uh, nah, I, um, I'm expecting the baby at the moment. I'd just like oh, to yeah. say... Um, <laughs> Your wife, you mean? Yeah, my, yeah, I'd just like to say hello to my mum, Billy, Nome, and hello to baby. I'm coming home, Corinne, and I love you. See you in a bit. Well done, well done. A remarkable story. Who's the champ? <laughs>